Welcome back guys, Automotive Inc. here. So I wanted to do a quick video. One of the watchers had a question. So they were kind of new to the heavy duty market and or potentially a diesel engine. And I do say um, diesel regens often when I talk about diesels and the problems that come with it. Well, back in like 2010 or actually sorry, about 2007 and a half, 2008, um, EPA restrictions came hard onto diesels to help reduce NOx, particulate matter, that these diesel engines produced, um, albeit, you know, people used to say rolling coal uh, would be the black soot that had come out of an old, uh, older diesel. And back in the day, they really just had soot collectors and mufflers on there, and that was about it. Because diesel engines are actually really clean, even though they look like they're putting out a lot of black carbon. But they are really actually much less harmful than a typical gas engine and if you go back to the video I did on the Ram the Ram actually has a B plus on exhaust pipe uh, and tailpipe uh, pollutants uh, compared to even other diesels and or gas but after 2008 they came out with systems and particulate filters that used diesel particulate burnoffs meaning they used an injector that was on the DPF and it injected diesel in there to help um, combust that or turn that down. Well, the actual, you know, meaning of the D DPF burnoff is, by definition, is the process which soot within the diesel particulate filter, or DPF as I call it, is converted to ash through the use of heat, chemical reactions, and or electricity. Soot combustion temperatures range from 250 degrees Celsius to 350 um, and without a catalyst, 550 degree range. Um, now, what that means is, is what they found is using the diesel, that created a lot of heat. It also cut into fuel economy. So diesels used to be known for really good fuel economy. <clears throat> so when they packed that on there and started using diesel to do those regens, because that extra filter basically is just like a, a big plug in the way of the exhaust getting out of the exhaust pipe. <clears throat> well, diesel engines produce more soot, so those filters fill up quickly, especially if you're not creating enough heat in those systems daily to keep them clean, meaning the higher the temperature the trucks ran at, i.e. towing, um, heavy use, long drives, etc. and so forth, it's hard to keep those DPFs clean. Now, because a lot of engines recirculate also some of that gas, that clogs up the, um, the EGR valves and everything like that. So, you know, and that has a whole nother uh, ball of definitions. An EGR is your exhaust gas recirculation valve. And that basically takes quantities of some of the gas um, to the engine back into the intake. It supposedly helps with uh, increased efficiency and reduces fuel consumption. It seems to just make a mess more than it does good. And back in the day, most engines didn't have this on there. So you have all these extra components on a diesel engine that say a gas engine might have an EGR, but it may not have you know, certain other things, depending on how the engines and everything are built. But at the end of the day, these diesel engines, it really was the death of the modern diesel engine. And what I try and tell people all the time is, even when we're towing all the time with the power strokes at work, or the Duramaxes, or the Cummins, they still need to do their regen process. So a regeneration, again, is that burning off of that soot. So nowadays, they use DEF, which is basically a urea compound they came out with. I call it Obama lube, um, because it came out during his administration. And uh, basically, it's the catalyst that they're using now instead of diesel. And so fuel economy then went back up a little bit, like my 6.4 um, power stroke. It got about 11, you know, 14 at best, empty. And uh, now, you know, they're back up in the uh, high teens, but so are the new gassers. Well, a lot of people don't know. When you go to a dealership and you tell somebody there, hey, I wanna buy a truck, I'm gonna tow this, they'll probably ask what you like, things that are important to you, whether you need gas or diesel, and they might swing you one way or another depending on what they have on their lot. However, they're never gonna undersell you. So if you go in thinking you need a diesel truck, they're going to take you that direction unless you say something differently. When I was selling cars, I would always try and actually sit down and find out what their exact needs are, especially if they came and said, well, I think I need a diesel. So you think, you don't know for sure. So let's talk about your needs, your wants, your desires. Some people just want that diesel engine. 
I get that. That's fine. But again, when somebody goes in and they're sold this truck thinking that they can fire it up in the cold winter, let it sit for 10 minutes, drive over to the kiddo's school, shut it off, fire it up, warm it up again for 10 minutes, drive to the grocery store, commute 5 minutes, 15, even 30 minutes on, on stop and go traffic, and come home and park it, that that is actually tremendously horrible for uh, a new a modern diesel. And the reason is, is because it, that particulate filter is trapping all that heat it doesn't have a free-flowing system and most states will actually frown upon you deleting a modern diesel there are some hefty fines you get caught in some states even if you're not uh, um, say a um, a citizen of their of their state or whatever you know and um, it, it can be really bad so knowledge is power so when we look at how do you get around that well the the truck's going to need what's called passive regens Meaning, eventually, that DPF is going to get clogged up. And the truck may t give you a warning device. Um, it may give you a dummy light. It, in the Ram, it has a gauge. Uh, in the newer Chevys, it has a gauge, I believe. A digital gauge just kind of tells you how full the DPF is getting. And I even think the Ford has it, too. And what that means is, because uh, my 0864 would tell you, regen required. Now, here's where people go wrong. They hop in the truck, they're driving home from work, they're tired from the end of the week, and they go, the light comes on. And they're ready to go home. They've been driving. Well, even though you don't think about getting that, that engine's getting all that hot, it got hot already. Um, it creates a lot of heat doing all that, all that combustion, even just driving with no towing. And you don't drive it when it says it needs regen and go home and park it. All that heat is trapped. So what that does is it's stuck in the turbo, it's stuck in the pipes, it's stuck in the... The, the soot collector or the DPF, if you will, and, and it just causes a mess of things. And after a while, that will destroy your systems. All that heat, that heat, contraction, expansion, everything like that breaks down all of these components. It's the only way to get around it, and I had no problems with uh, dilution on my 6.4 power stroke, one of the worst alleged power strokes ever, was if you didn't do the regens, then it would eventually dilute the oil because, again, some of that stuff's being regurgitated back into the system and it's bad and i just didn't ever have the issue because it was a pain in the ass but i hopped in drove the truck home my 20 minute drive and most of the time that truck only towed anyway but once i started using it for just commuting which is only for about a month or so it needed a regen about every three or four days so it was enough to clog it up now you may not need that many on say a 22 versus an 08 however my 13 lml diesel needed it my L5P Gen 1 needed it, which is a 21. Uh, my Power Stroke 21 needed it. Um, my 16 um, Cummins really didn't have that many issues on that, that issue, 13 and 12. Like I said, I think the Cummins engine has got that issue figured out better than others. Not saying it doesn't need it. But what will happen is, is the passive regions will come on. The truck will either let you know or it will just start doing it on its own. Usually it'll say that DPF is clean, DPS, DPF is full. I mean, all the way back in 08, it, it was able to tell you. And then there are the ones that have to be a forced regen, which is usually something that you can't do. It's something that um, like, a, like a mechanic would do at a shop with a special scan tool or tool from that manufacturer to force it into a hard regen because at that point, your, your passive regens are no longer working. So if you're looking at a truck after 2010-ish for most of them, uh, DEF fluid is what you're going to be. That is, like I said, a ure urea-based compound. It's like ammonia. That's what it smells like. Um, and you're going to put that in a separate tank inside the, the truck. And no matter if you're looking at an Eco Diesel half ton, uh, a little Duramax um, half ton, or even the little Colorado or, or Colorado Canyon, um, you're looking at the little short run, I think three liter power stroke that Ford had, you're going to have def. So that's going to be an issue. On top of that, your system requires maintenance. EGRs need to be cleaned or they go bad. Eventually, probably about 70 to 75, 80,000 miles. If you don't do the regens correctly, you're probably going to need if, if a, a DPF replacement and or a cleaning um, if it's not burnt up, um, the systems just can't do it uh, and, and keep it clean if you're going to use it as a commuter. That's why I frown upon getting a diesel um, if you're not towing probably over 100 times a year. 
Just saying. I mean, I tow a lot and I still would choose a, a gas um, over that because of the issues. Now, we did just introduce a new Cummins to the channel and we are going to keep monitoring that because I know a lot of people are still like, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. I am 600 miles in and I need a regen today. So I, instead of just shutting it off, I hopped on our local parkway that's the closest thing to my house that's the highway and had to pay to drive for about 25 minutes one way. And again, that was, you know, very no towing, just commuting. And I took a 200 mile trip on that truck, on that truck. So we're already getting into that issue. Those parts are very expensive, so just keep that in mind, a DPF and Regen, or sorry, uh, EGR, everything like that, if you had to replace them, you're talking in the thousands. If you get caught with all that crap taken off, you're talking tens of thousands. And um, over the life of your truck, you know, when it comes to uh, def fluid, you're probably not going to use as much. Um, as you think, however, you, once you open a jug of it, if you just, you never keep it around. Once it says it needs to be filled, you get a jug, you fill it. Um, I always tell people not to buy uh, def fluid from a bulk pump. That's more for semis that have massive tanks and burn through this stuff all the time. Uh, most pickups aren't going to burn through it quick enough. So usually once you open a tub of it, you, if you fill it up and don't use it, you're going to need to find a place to dispose of it because what that'll do is start putting crystalline stuff on there as it, as the water part of that evaporates. And then that stuff, if you do that, will be then dumped into your def tank. And then eventually, like I had with my um, LML, my 13 LML, um, where it shut down and went into limp mode because it said poor def quality. So there are so many parts to this whole equation when it comes to diesel, but basically regen is your cars produce pollutants and in a diesel it's going through the system it's then hitting it's going through the catalytic converter and then it's heading down to the the diesel particulate filter where it just starts basically sandbagging all of that that soot that's coming through the system and if you produce enough heat some of that will pass and go through and you won't see it at the exhaust pipe that's why exhaust pipes are super clean looking now uh, versus the days of old they look like black soot all over that um, but after a while if you don't produce enough heat from towing and driving uh, that system is going to go into a region, and if that still doesn't do it, eventually you're going to be at a shop where they're going to need to remove the, that part of the system and either a clean it or replace it, and we're talking thousands of dollars. This is not just big semis. This is every diesel basically made in the United States that, that had to meet the EPA restrictions after basically 2007 and a half, 2008. So again, there are great benefits to modern diesel engines. Um, However, with the way gas engines have moved up and their abilities to get good fuel economy, put out tons of horsepower, and most people aren't really towing as much as they used to in weight, size, yes, but not weight, I think you can get away with a gas engine. Um, but, you know, I will put this, this coming to the test and kind of show everybody, you know, we're, we're one regen in at 600 miles, and we'll just kind of keep a keep a foot on it how many times again i'm going to do the right thing and i'm going to go do that drive i'm going to get that uh, regen to complete um, because you will not be able to force a regen by yourself it'll have to be done by a mechanic so i hope that helps everybody when it comes to it again there's not really any there's all kinds of diagrams on the internet but they're not always necessarily exactly the same as your your specific vehicle so i just wanted to do a video on that what that kind of means what kind of responsibility comes with that and you just have to be ready for it but i will tell you this much if you maintain a diesel you do the regens as the truck needs and and just take good care not to shut it down with with heat in it again once uh even if it's not doing a regen you're doing towing the turbo has been spooling a lot and doing a lot of work come back if it's been towing a lot let it sit for a couple minutes in the drive before you shut it off um, if it's been towing for three hours, let it sit for 10 minutes until it cools off. If you just drove across town, give it 20, 30 seconds before you shut it off. Because what that does is allows the turbo to cool down. You wouldn't think it would cool down, but it's cooling down quite a bit. As soon as you shut it off, imagine that DPF, it's already bogging stuff down. It just traps all the remaining heat in the system. There's not a lot between, you know, all of that really expensive components and everything. So guys, I do appreciate you guys being here. Go ahead and smash the subscribe button over there for me and hit the like and we'll see you on the next one.